Hello students, good morning everybody. Today we are going to start the application of reflections. Already in our previous video, we studied about the reflection of light and the famous law related to the reflection, which is called the Snell's law. <clears throat> in today's lecture, we will focus ourselves on application of refraction. So the first application we will discuss today, it is the <clears throat> refraction through the glass lab and uh, how the uh, lateral shift occur in a glass lab. So when refraction of light take place through a rectangular glass lab, the emergent ray is parallel to the incident ray and there is no deviation, but the ray suffers lateral displacement or lateral shift with respect to the incident ray. So let us take a glass slab and light is made to fall on the slab. So this is our incident light. It is shown with the this black arrow. It is our incident light. So if suppose there is no glass slab in the path of light, then what is the expected path? This is the expected path of the incident ray. It will go straight. But unfortunately, in the path of the light, at this point, the light is facing the glass lab. So rather than moving through this path, the light will bend and light will show this bending. And this angle, this angle, this is called angle of deviation. So we can represent this angle as the delta, uh, it is angle of deviation. And uh, this angle with the normal, it is called angle of refraction. So we, you just take, this is angle of incidence, and this is angle of refraction, angle of incidence and angle of refraction, they are always with the normal, but angle of deviation, uh, it is the angle between the uh, expected path of the ray of light and the actual path. This was the expected path of the ray of light, and this is the actual path. So angle between the expected path of the ray of light and the actual path is called the angle of deviation. Now, when the ray of light will come out from the glass slab, what will happen? This is the emergent ray. The emergent ray, it will move parallel to the expected path of the ray of light. So both these paths, they are parallel. Now we are interested, we are interested how much how much distance the light has traveled laterally means this was the expected path. Now this is the actual path. Now the perpendicular distance between the expected path and the actual path, it is called the lateral shift. So we want to find out this lateral shift. The perpendicular distance between the expected path of the ray of light and the actual path, it is called the lateral shift. So we want to calculate, we want to find the formula for the lateral shift. So that is our target. So let us go for that. So now this is our incident ray making an angle I with the normal. And uh, if there is no glass lab in the path of the ray of light, then definitely the ray of light will follow this path shown by these dashed line. But because of the presence of glass lab, the light will bend because light is going from the rarer medium to the denser medium, then light will bend towards the normal. So at this point, the light will bend and it will bend and it will reach the glass lab at point B, making an angle R with the normal and this angle R is called the angle of refraction. And this remaining angle, this remaining angle I minus R, basically it is called angle of deviation. I minus R, it is called the angle of deviation. So it is the angle between the expected path of the ray of light shown by this dash line and the actual path of the ray of light shown by this a B line. Now, 
the ray of light reaches at point B. At point B, we draw a normal. We draw a normal, and uh, this is the angle of incidence at this point. But this angle of incidence, this will be equal to angle of refraction. So rather than taking this angle as I, this angle is taken as R because this angle is equal to this angle. So R is here. So this angle also become R. Now, light is coming out from the glass lab to the air. So it is going from denser media to the rarer media. Now it will bend away from the normal. Actually, light should move through this path, but because it is moving from the denser media to the rare media, so it will bend away from the normal, making an angle I at point B, and this angle E is called angle of emergence. So we are interested in the perpendicular distance between the actual path and the expected path. So we are interested in this delta x. So now we will take a triangle, choose the triangle AMB, AMB, and we will find out cos r from this triangle. You choose A and B and try to find out cos R from this triangle. So cos R that is equal to AM upon AB. So base upon hypotenuse. Base upon hypotenuse. Base is AM, base is AM and hypotenuse is AB. So base upon hypotenuse. So we are interested in this uh, hypotenuse AB so AB is equal to AM. So AB is equal to AM upon cos R. And now what is this AM? Basically, it is a thickness. It is equal to thickness of the glass slab. So AB, <coughs> it is equal to T upon cos R. Right? So distance traveled by light inside the glass slab is AB. It is equal to T upon cos R. So what is this? AB, AB, basically it is the distance traveled by the light in the glass lab. So how much distance light has traveled in the glass lab? It is AB. And we can find out that the distance with the formula T upon cos R. So if we know the angle of uh, refraction, so by putting the value of cos that of that angle, and we know the thickness of the glass lab, so we can find out the distance traveled by the light within the glass lab. So AB is the distance traveled by the light within the glass lab. Now, because our target is to find out uh, this delta X, now this AB is known, and now uh, how to find out BC. So let us go for that. So we will take the triangle A, B, and C. Our target is to find out BC. So we will find out uh, sine I minus R, in the triangle A, B, C. So find out sine. So perpendicular upon hypotenuse. Perpendicular is B, C, and hypotenuse is A, B. So sine I minus R is equal to perpendicular upon hypotenuse, means B, C upon A, B. And uh, we assumed B, C is equal to delta X. So place uh, delta X at the place of B, C. B, C is equal to delta X. Uh, so now it becomes equal to BC is equal to delta X is equal to AB sine I minus R. Now already we know AB, AB is the distance traveled by the light within the glass lab. I already, we have calculated that which is equal to T upon cos R. So delta X, the lateral shift, which is the perpendicular distance between the expected path of the light and the actual path of the light, so delta x is equal to t upon cos r sine i minus r. And this 
perpendicular distance, this is called the lateral shift. So the lateral shift So the lateral shift that is directly proportional to that is directly proportional to thickness of the glass lab. If we take two glass lab, one is thick, <coughs> other is thin. So glass lab having more thickness that will show more delta x because in that case i minus r. So this, this was all about, uh, about the lateral shift. Okay, thank you.